I thank the gentleman. The gentlewoman from Georgia, Ms. Williams, is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Davidson and Ranking Member Cleaver for this hearing today, and thank you to our witnesses for joining us. Y'all, I represent Georgia's fighting 5th Congressional District, which is home to Atlanta. The Census Bureau just announced last week that Atlanta continues to grow rapidly, and we're now the sixth largest metropolitan area in the country. You might have seen the signs that say that Atlanta is full, but I welcome everyone who wants to come and call this magical city home and allow Atlanta to change their lives like it changed mine. But y'all, there's one big glaring problem. We don't have enough quality, affordable housing for everyone, and that has generational effects way beyond ensuring that people have a place to lay their heads at night. For decades, home ownership has been how Americans build generational wealth, making it an essential tool for closing the racial wealth gap. Atlanta has many accolades, which I'm sure you'll hear me talk about many times throughout this Congress, but there's one that we don't quite want to be proud of, and that is having one of the widest racial wealth gaps in the country, a gap that could be closed with the opportunity that comes from accessible, affordable home ownership to build that generational wealth. One of the biggest challenges home, home buyers in Atlanta face is having to compete with large institutional investors, purchasing homes in bulk, and turning them into rental housing, eliminating the wealth building potential of each house that they buy. In the third quarter of 2021 alone, institutional investors bought 42.8% of all single family homes for sale in the Atlanta metro area. This lost opportunity adds up, y'all. According to research published by Georgia Tech, black communities in Atlanta lost $4 billion, with a B, in home equity over 10 years due to large investors buying properties in black neighborhoods. And that's why I've co-led the In Hedge Fund Control of American Homes Act, bicameral legislation that would end hedge fund ownership of single family homes over 10 years. We desperately need this legislation in Atlanta, where Georgia State University has found that 19,000 single family rental homes are owned by just three companies, just three y'all, none of which are headquartered in Atlanta. Ms. Bailey, how does the heavy involvement of institutional investors in the housing market contribute to the housing inventory shortage, which we've agreed on a bipartisan level that inventory is a huge problem? How does that impact this, what, that we're already experiencing? It's actually driving up all the affordable homes in stock in communities that have been hardest hit by the Great Recession. That's the part of this conversation that we're not really talking about. They're actually buying homes for people who would actually be able to afford homes if the market hadn't been overcorrected. We know that following the Great Recession, that there could have been an additional 700,000 black homeowners, but we overcorrected, we overextended. Those buyers now need first generation down payment assistance to be able to compete. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. These investors tend to concentrate their purchasing in low-income communities and communities of color. In other words, areas where buying a home and building equity is the most direct path towards closing the racial wealth gap. Ms. Bailey, how does the presence of institutional investors harm first-time home buyers, especially in marginalized communities, as they are already struggling with the lack of affordable housing? They make it really difficult for housing costs to come down. So if you're even a renter in those communities, your rents are going up because they're, again, taking advantage of all the available affordable housing stock. So people are paying more money in their rental payments, making it less likely that they'll be able to save for a down payment. Again, we have a solution. The Down Payment Toward Equity Act is one of the solutions, as well as the Housing Crisis Response Act. States like Minnesota, Vermont, Rhode Island, New Jersey, they're all instituting support for first generation down payment assistance. Even states in the South like North Carolina are instituting the support because we understand that people just show up to this equation differently. We've never corrected for our nation's history of discrimination. So while it's uncomfortable talking about black and white when it comes to housing, the reality is we can't escape it. These provisions are restorative and they're race neutral and they will help to bring economic activity in communities that have long been denied. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. And we talked about the, the down payment assistance for first time home buyers, but what other strategies should Congress examine to help reduce the harm caused by institutional investors' control of so much of the housing market? I think we need to look at the legislation that you just well discussed to make sure we are monitoring who's being able to purchase and bulk those homes. Again, we need to make sure we're fully enforcing our nation's fair housing and lending laws, the affirmatively furthering fair housing law, uh, 
provision under the Fair Housing Act is something that we need to make sure HUD is well equipped to enforce. So that's something. We also need to make sure we're well funding housing choice vouchers so that renters can actually have the ability to get access to quality housing. And, and we have to talk about things like the low income housing tax credit. We need to make sure it gives people family choice in terms of where they can actually live. Thank you, and I'm out of time. Thank the gentlewoman. The